Following on from the previous video, we had this frictionless cycloid and we were trying to show that no matter where you release the particle, the time it takes to hit the, the lowest point will always be the same. So even if you release it here, even though the distance is less, the time it takes to hit the, uh, the lowest point will, will be the same as you releasing it from the origin. Even if you release it here, the distance will be shorter. Even though the distance is shorter, the time it takes to hit the, the lowest point will be the same as you releasing it here. If you think about it, the reason for that is um, when you first release this particle, the gaining speed here at this point here is a lot is, is a lot higher than than the gain in speed here. So even though the distance is shorter, the the speed here will be uh, will be lower than than the speed up here. Well, uh, we we were trying to show that the time, no matter where you release the uh, the particle, the time it takes to hit the lowest point will always be the same. And the way we're going to do that is that. Is we're going to calculate the time it takes uh, for for the uh, for the particle to to get to the lowest point when when released uh, from the origin, and then we're going to and then we're going to show that no matter where you release it, whether here or here, the time will always be the same. But before we can show that, I need to get some basics out of the way first. So um, so we've seen this before when when we first started projectiles. Uh, you're, you're standing on top of a building of height of height 125. Gravity is 10. You release a cannonball. So when time when time equals zero, the speed will be zero. You're releasing it from rest. And then one second later, the speed will be 10. Two seconds later, speed will be 20, and so on. We've seen this before. So by the time just before it hits the ground, the speed will be 50. So un, under constant acceleration, your acceleration time graph will look like this. And then your 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 speed time graph will look like this, and then your distance time graph will look like will look like this. And we've seen this before. Um, so so if you want to calculate uh, the the speed at time equals five, you can always use this relationship. But that, but what I'm trying to show here is that there's another way of calculating the speed uh, just before it hits the ground. We could use the relationship between between potential energy and kinetic energy. So, so when the cannonball is, is right here, the potential energy would be the height of the building uh, uh, times gravity and then times the mass of the cannonball, times the mass of the cannonball. So the potential energy of this cannonball would be mgh. And as the, as the cannonball is falling, the, the potential energy decreases. The potential energy decreases as the cannonball um, uh, as the cannonball is falling, but as as the potential energy decreases, it gets uh, it, it, the the kinetic energy it will, the kinetic energy will increase. the The loss in potential energy gets transferred to the kinetic energy, and you can use this relationship to find out the the velocity at time equals five. So 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 a uh, a loss in potential energy, a loss in potential energy is really the gain in kinetic energy. So you can use this relationship. M, uh, the height is 125 times gravity, which is 10 here. That will then give you this times the mass of the cannonball. So the potential energy is this. But but then by the uh, by, by the time just before it hits the ground, the the kinetic energy, well everything gets transferred to the kinetic energy. So you you can cancel out the M here and then. Uh, times both sides by 2, that will then give you this. So if you want to know the velocity, then square root both sides. So the velocity here is 50. The point that I'm trying to make is, is that the uh, the loss in potential energy is a gain in kinetic energy. And you can use this fact to, um, to find the velocity. So if you have something like this, if you have this, this weird path, let's say the particle is here. Uh, so so uh, the the velocity will always be at the tangent to uh, to the path. So so if you want to know the velocity here, you can just use potential energy. So hang on. So uh, so you can just use this potential energy. The height here is going to be. So the potential energy here is um, is m g h. And then the but by the time even those so so by the time it gets to here, the, the velocity will be really high as it's rising. Uh, the, the the velocity decreases. So the point is that you can find out this velocity by looking at the potential energy, uh, the, the potential energy, the, the the potential energy taking in the height from here to here. So so if you want to know the, the 
the velocity at this weird point here. Remember, the velocity will be at a tangent. You know? So if you want to know the velocity here, uh, then, then, then take the height at this point here. So, so look at the, the potential energy by taking the height from here to here. If, if you want to know the, the kinetic energy, sorry, if you want to know the, the velocity at this point here, then, then you have to use this height here. You have to use this height. So, uh, so, yes, so if, if you want to know the, the velocity at, at this point here, at this point here, then, then here you have to use this height. You have to use this height here. So, uh, so if you want to know the, the velocity at this point here, then your, your, your height in, in your potential energy, you have to use this height here. Okay? I will continue in the next video.